Lord Maharaj, please tell us something in glorification of Master Maharaj Swami. Shalakaya, Chaksur, Vundali Tanyena, Tasma Shri Guru Venamaha, Vanchakau Pataru Yasya, Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha, Padita Nam Pavani Dio, Vaishnava Dio, Namonama. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nichananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktivinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, I first saw Pramal Krishna Goswami in the Brooklyn Temple, the old Brooklyn Temple on Henry Street, when he'd come back from India. He'd come back from India to begin come preaching in USA. And of course that's what eventually led to Radha Damodar party. And he came to Brooklyn. We'd heard, of, we'd heard about him. I think from the beginning, my coming in the Krishna consciousness movement, I heard about Tamal Krishna Goswami. And uh, I saw pictures of him. I heard how he'd been given sannyas by Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada said he has given up everything to preach Krishna consciousness. Because when he was initiated into sannyas, it meant that he would give up being the GBC. He was actually GBC in those days, but but no, in those days, you could not be a GBC if you were a sannyasi. It was only grihastas, other people, brahmacharya. They were the GBC. And if you took sannyas, you were expecting just to go full time into preaching. So Srila Prabhupada appreciated that he gave up his position as a GBC and he gave up his wife also to preach sannyas. Uh, to take sannyas to preach Krishna consciousness. So I remember seeing photographs of this and later on I saw him then in the Brooklyn temple. He came from India and he brought presents to give to the deities in New York. He brought something, he brought some dust from the Holy Dawn and he brought some water from the Radhakund and he had it all in little silver caskets and he brought them to be presented to the deities in the temple, Radha Govinda temple there in Brooklyn. So very nice that his mood was like that. He liked to uh, do things to, to encourage people with recipro reciprocation. He was a very intense person, you could say. Intense, that he wanted to do so much for Prabhupada. And it wasn't always so easy for him. He had some people who were against him. Because he took the position after Srila Prabhupada's departure, because he had been so intimate with Prabhupada, he was naturally one of the leaders of the Krishna consciousness movement. And as a leader of the Krishna consciousness movement, he was very conscious about everything. Everything he wanted, he wanted everything done very nicely. And you can see, for example, the temples which he managed, Dallas, 
Hong Kong. He, he didn't he didn't have a very big zone. He had a very small zone. And sometimes I would say to him, you know, you know, we should be doing more. We we should be we there's you know we should we're not progressing, we're not getting anywhere. He said, what can I do? He said, I I only have this zone. I said, he said, my zone is just so limited. He went to Hong Kong. There were no devotees. We were in a rented apartment. But he came there and he arranged to purchase a place. And not only did he just purchase a place, but he got Surabi, the famous architect who designed Bombay and Vrindavan, he got Surabi to design the Hong Kong temple. And that Hong Kong temple remains as it is today from the days when he opened the temple in the 1980s and it hasn't changed. It's just exactly as it was in his days. It was, it was so well done. It was so impressive. And similarly, Dallas, you go to Dallas. I haven't been there in, these, in those since he took over, but I've heard from others how he has beautiful murals done by that famous uh, Gujarati artist who paints Krishna's uh, pictures, oil paintings. The walls of the temple of Dallas are all covered with beautiful oil paintings by this, that Mr. Sharma, who's an artist. And the, the temple in Dallas becomes the Dallas Palace. It's the palace is really <laughs> it's such a, an amazing place. So he was he he really wanted to do something very nice. Everything done it had to be done very nicely. And the the restaurant again the restaurant in Dallas Kalachanji's very successful, very nicely done, very good quality food. He followed Srila Prabhupada's mood. Just like I remember Srila Prabhupada, whenever we would have a program, Prabhupada would say, I want to see what prasadam you're distributing for the guests. If we had arranged some program in some hall or something, Prabhupada would say, I want to see what are you giving the guests? What kind of prasadam are you giving them? And so similarly, Tamal Krishna Maharaj was very particular he liked to see the prasadam should be very nice. Sometimes people would jokingly call him the, the gourmet sannyasi. Gourmet sannyasi means one who relishes, one who, a gourmet, special, very special dishes, very nice. But he would never like to eat alone. Whenever he would come to Hong Kong, at least, or in the Philippines, I know the Philippines was also his zone. And uh, whenever he would take prasada, he would invite the senior devotees to come and sit with him. And he would talk with them. And you'd take the same prasada as he was taking. He liked to have that exchange with the devotees. He didn't like to be a on his own. He enjoyed being with devotees. But at the same time, because of his intensity, sometimes it would be difficult for people to uh, accept. Sometimes, myself, I was, well, he brought me to Hong Kong, because in those days, Hong Kong was a Br British Territory, a British colony, and they said you can stay in Hong Kong. It was difficult at that time for Americans to come to Hong Kong, but he said you're British. He said you can stay there. And so he said you should come and help me develop the Hong Kong. And so I went there, but I can't say that I was very close to Tamal Krishna Maharaj. You know, he he was such an an intense personality, so powerful, and you know I'm I'm just a low class person. I'm a very hopeless person, and 
I didn't really know how to properly behave. So I, I kept a distance from him. But occasionally, sometimes be with him and he would speak. He was very senior. And I always addressed him as Guru Dev. Although I'm Srila Prabhupada's disciple, but I always I never hesitated to address him as Guru Dev. And Srila Prabhupada also says like that that someone who is senior to you, even though he may be initiated by the same person, you should accept them just like your spiritual master. And so I had that kind of relationship with Srila Guru Dev, that he was like my spiritual master. He liked to preach to high class and educated people. So going into the academic preaching, it was actually something which was just right for him. To go to places like Cambridge University and study there. And I heard how he'd bring different professors to his home in the evening and serve them prasadam and preach to them, present the Krishna conscious philosophy. So he liked going to seminars also. There was, this, there was this one big seminar they have in the USA every year. Uh, what is it? The, the religion seminar or some once a year they have this thing. All the different professors of the different religions and so on they all come and they present papers and so he would go to it and he sometimes also would write a paper to be presented there at the conference at the seminar and this was the kind of thing he liked you know something which would really stretch him which would it would require his full efforts his full concentration and he liked to give that. He liked to do everything he could for the service of Krishna. So he wanted so much to see this big temple come up in Mayapur. He was the one who Prabhupada sent to Mayapur to purchase the land. And it's interesting how the land which he purchased is where the TOV is coming up today. So he certainly, if he was here with us today, I'm sure he'd have a lot, a lot to say and have a lot of suggestions what needs to be done because he was such a active thinker. He had so much intelligence. He was so sharp and so uh, much dedicated to Srila Prabhupada's mission. I said to him one time, why didn't you just sit, why don't you just sit down in Vrindavan and read the books of the Goswamis? And he looked at me and he said, that's all I wanted to do, but they wouldn't let me do it. They wouldn't let me just sit down in Vrindavan and read the books of the Goswami. But that was Timal Krishna Goswami's mood. He loved the culture so much. And he was so well read, he was so learned, he knew all the philosophy. So, certainly we miss him very much. It was a very painful experience for his departure. And somehow we're struggling to keep everything going on in his absence. So, Srila Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj Ki. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Oh, Thank you so much, Maharaj. Now we will request His Holiness Bhakti Anugraha Janardha Swami Maharaj. Please say a few words.